You're listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. Well, Jack, look at what you've done. Uh, d- done? You've gone ahead and hit the festive theme on the tortoise, complete with lights, Christmas tree, and blazing hearth. Actually, this is all of my own decorating. After purchasing Shire North and, and all the repairs, I really haven't had money for anything else. But I thought I could make things a little Christmassy around here, at least. Well, it fits in very well with the Christmas nebula we're in right now in the Audioverse. It looks quite lovely and fits in with today's feature from Jason Markovitz as he presents for us Artaban and the Quest for the King. Uh, uh, have a hot toddy then? Oh, of course. Cheers. And our feature begins right here on the Sonic Society. Marky Witt's Audio Works proudly presents Artaban and the Quest for the King, starring Brian Jeffords as Artaban and Jason Markiewicz as Colonel Blackwood. Also appearing in this production are Justin Ali, Bethany Baldwin, Martin Beadle, Nate Beagle, Caleb Bressler, Jonathan Cook, Trina Duhart, Charlie Everly, Richard Gibson, Sharon Grunwald, Alicia Hansen, Glenn Haskell, Jason Lasky, Rainy Mangan, and Rachel Pulliam. Now, we invite you to close your eyes and travel back in time to 1918 England. It is Christmas Eve, and only six weeks has passed since Armistice Day. Colonel Blackwood, a highly decorated infantry officer who commanded thousands of soldiers across the treacherous battlefields of Europe, and who prayed over the crude crosses at the heads of hundreds of shallow and inconspicuous graves, has finally returned home just in time for Christmas dinner with his family. Mary, darling, you must finish your veg or you'll not get pudding. Finish up now. That's a good love. A wonderful meal, my darling Mrs. Blackwood. Fit for King George V himself. Well, at least fit for an officer of your stature, my dear Colonel Blackwood. Would you like some more wine, husband? Well, only if you're the one pouring it, wife. Oh, Oh, how I have missed you, my darling. It seemed the fighting would never end. From the moment of the surrender last month, all I prayed for was getting home to you and the children by Christmas. I thank God my prayers have been answered. It was the longest four years of my life, you know. As it was mine. The children have grown so tall. Emily is nearly a woman now. Elizabeth, a teenager. Mary, a quite precocious six. And young Jack... Had not yet been brought forth into this world when I left. Look at him. (laughs) My son. He has your attitude, you know. He barely listens to a word I say half the time. Well, then, it is a blessing that he has such a strong mother to keep him and me in line. And don't you forget it. (laughs) 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 Oh, how I missed that sound. What? The chaos? No, the happiness. The laughter that only a family filled with such love can sustain. Chaos was what I left on the battlefield, my dear. This, oh, this is heaven. Well then, let's get these angels to bed. Well, right you are, my dear. (gasps) (laughs) Children, 
I know you are all very excited, as this is Christmas Eve, but Santa Claus will not come down the chimney until visions of sugar plums are dancing in your heads. Oh, Father, can we stay up a little longer? Please, can we sleep by the Christmas tree? <laughs> Please, Father, just a few more minutes. <laughs> Children, listen to your father. It's time for bed. Emily, dear, please help your brother. Yes, Mother. Come along, everyone. Oh, my, they are growing up, aren't they? They certainly are. Come, help me clear the table. Of course, my dear. Papa, can you tell us a story before bed? Merry girl, let me ask your mother. Of course he can, but only after you're all washed. <laughs> now, off with you. He said yes! He said yes! Oh, look at her. I'll finish up here, darling. Go, regale them with stories of your adventures. God blessed me with you, my love. And don't you forget it. Now, give me a kiss. I love you with all my heart. I love you too. Now go, the children are waiting. Of course, dear. Children, where are you hiding? In Jack's room, father. <laughs> ah, look at all of you. How I have missed you. We missed you too, Papa. And Mary. My goodness, how you have grown. What are you now? Four. No, five. Papa, <laughs> I'm six. <laughs> my, so you are. I'm three. No, you're not. You're four. No, I'm not. Mama says I'm three. In a few days, Jack, you'll be four. See? <laughs> Emily, don't encourage him. And Elizabeth, you're 13. And Emily is 16. And how old are you, Papa? <laughs> old enough, my child, that I need this chair to sit in if I'm going to tell you all a bedtime story. Now. What story should we read? Through the Looking Glass. Peter Pan! The Wizard of Oz! And what about you, Jack? I don't know. <laughs> well, children, those are all some of my favorite stories. Except the one titled, I Don't Know. <laughs> but I have a better idea. Now, you have heard of the three wise men who visited baby Jesus in the manger? Yes, Papa. Yes, Papa. But have you ever heard the story of the other wise man who also saw the star in its rising and set out to follow it, yet did not arrive with his brethren in the presence of the newborn king? No. No, no Papa. No, Papa. Well then, lie down on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Jack, lie on the floor. And I'll tell you all of the fourth wise man. In the days when Augustus Caesar was master of many kings and Herod reigned in Jerusalem, there lived in the city of Ecbatana, among the mountains of Persia, a stalwart magi priest named Artaban. His house stood close to the outermost of the seven walls which encircled the royal treasury and from his roof he could look over the rising battlements of black and white and crimson and blue and red and silver and gold, to the hill where the summer palace of the Parthian emperors glittered like a jewel in a sevenfold crown. Sounds beautiful! <laughs> oh, yes it was. Around Artaban's house spread a beautiful garden, a tangle of flowers and fruit trees, watered by a great many streams descending from the mountains. And if you listen closely, you can hear the music of innumerable birds. Listen. Can you hear them, children? I think I do! <laughs> I, I, do. Think I, I think I do! I think I do! Yes, of course. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> but on this late September night, the bright colors and beauty all around him was lost in the darkness, and with only embers in the fireplace and a single candle on the table, Artaban donned his priestly cloak and prepared to hold counsel with his friends. Come, Abdus. Peace be with you. And also with you, Artaban. Rodaspis, Tigrenes. Welcome, my friends. Greetings, Greetings Artaban. Artaban. Peace be with you, my father, Abgarus. And also with you, my son. You are all welcome, and this house grows bright with the joy of your presence. Please sit and help yourselves to some bread and wine. You have come tonight at my call to renew your worship and rekindle your faith in the God of purity, even as this fire has been rekindled on the altar. We worship not the fire, but him of whom it is the chosen symbol because it is the purest of all created things. It speaks to us of one who is light and truth. Is it not so, my father? It is well said, my son. Uh, the enlightened are never idolaters. Hear me, then, my father and my friends, while I tell you of the new light and truth that have come to me through the most ancient of all signs. We have searched the secrets of nature together and studied the healing virtues of water and fire and the plants. We have read also the books of prophecy in which the future is dimly foretold in words that are hard to understand. But the highest of all learning is the knowledge of the stars. What have you discovered in the stars, Artaban? As you know, Abdus... To trace their courses is to untangle the threads of the mystery of life from the beginning to the end. If we could follow them perfectly, nothing would be hidden from us. But our knowledge of the stars is still incomplete. There are many stars still beyond our horizon. Yes, Rodaspis, precisely. Lights that are known only to the dwellers in the far southland, among the spice trees and the gold mines. But Artaban... The stars are the thoughts of the eternal. They are numberless. Are you insinuating that the thoughts of man can be counted like the years of his life? The wisdom of the Magi is the greatest of all wisdoms on mm. earth because... Mm. Yes, yes, Tigranes. Even it knows its own ignorance. And that is the secret of power. We keep men always looking and waiting for a new sunrise... But we ourselves know that the darkness is equal to the light, and that the conflict between them will never be ended. Uh, that does not satisfy me, for if the waiting must be endless, if there could be no fulfillment of it, then it would not be wisdom to look and wait. We should become like those new teachers of the Greeks, who say there is no truth, and that the only wise men are those who spend their lives in discovering and exposing the lies that have been believed in the world. But the new sunrise will certainly dawn in the appointed time. Do not our own books tell us that this will come to pass, and that men will see the brightness of a great light? That is true. Every faithful disciple of Zoroaster knows the prophecy of the Avesta, and carries the word in his heart. In that day the victorious one shall arise, and around him shall shine a mighty brightness, and he shall make life everlasting, incorruptible, and, and immortal, and the dead shall rise again. This is a dark saying, Abgerus, and it may be that we shall never understand it. It is better to consider the things that are near at hand, and to increase the influence of the Magi in their own country. Rather, 
than to look for one who may be a stranger, and to whom we must resign our power. Agreed. Uh, well said. Uh, it's a compelling Gentlemen, argument. gentlemen, please, please, point. please, quiet. I hear your concerns, but you must hear me out. My father, I have kept this prophecy in the secret place of my soul. Religion without a great hope would be like an altar without a living fire. And now the flame has burned more brightly, and by the light of it I have read other words which also have come from the fountain of truth, and speak yet more clearly of the rising of the victorious one in his brightness. Here, see for yourselves. My eyes grow weary in this light. Abdus, as you are the youngest among us, would you come over here and read the text? Of course, Artaban. In the years that are lost in the past, long before our fathers came into the land of Babylon, there were wise men in Chaldea, for whom the first of the Magi learned the secret of the heavens. And of these... Balaam, the son of Beor, was one of the mightiest. Hear the words of his prophecy. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall arise out of Israel. Judah was a captive by the waters of Babylon, and the sons of Jacob were in bondage to our kings. The tribes of Israel are scattered through the mountains like lost sheep. And from the remnant that dwells in Judea under the yoke of Rome, neither star nor scepter shall arise. And yet, Tigranes, it was the Hebrew Daniel, the mighty searcher of dreams, the counselor of kings, who was most honored and beloved of our great King Cyrus, a prophet of sure things and a reader of the thoughts of God. Artaban is right, Tigranes. Daniel proved himself to our people. Thank you, Rodaspis. Uh, continue, if you would, please, Abdus. Um, uh, uh, ah, yes, here we are. It continues. Know, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore Jerusalem unto the Anointed One, the Prince, the time shall be seven and threescore and two weeks. But, my son, these are mystical numbers. Who can interpret them? Or who can find the key that shall unlock their meaning? Father, it has been shown to me and to my three companions among the Magi. We have searched the ancient tablets and computed the time. It falls in this year. We have studied the sky, and in the spring of the year we saw two of the greatest stars draw near together in the sign of the fish which is in the house of the Hebrews. We also saw a new star there, which shone for one night and then vanished. Vanished? And this non-existent star is that upon which you are basing this hypothesis? No, not just that star, Father, but also the previous two. Those two great planets are meeting. This night is their conjunction. The previous two? Their, their conjunction... Really? Artaban, oh, this seems true? quite extraordinary. Seems Even if those two are meeting, as you say, how do you know the third star will again shine? Rodaspis, gentlemen, I hear your skepticism, but you must have faith. My three brothers are watching at the ancient temple of the Seven Spheres in Babylonia, and I am watching here. If the star shines again, they will wait ten days for me at the temple... And then we will set out together for Jerusalem to see and worship the promised one who shall be born king of Israel. What if this sign does not come? I believe this sign will come, Tigranes. And I have made ready for the journey, gentlemen, with these. A sapphire, a ruby, and a pearl. Where did you come across such precious stones, Artaban? I didn't merely come across them, Rodaspis. I purchased them. I sold my house and my possessions. I will carry them as tribute to the king. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. I am not asking you to do the same. 
All I am asking of you is to go with me on the pilgrimage, that we may have joy together in finding the prince who is worthy to be served. Who will come with me? Tigranese, surely you will. Artaban, this is a vain dream. It comes from too much looking upon the stars and the cherishing of lofty thoughts. It would be wiser to spend the time in gathering money for the new fire temple at Chala. No king will ever rise from the broken race of Israel, and no end will ever come to the eternal strife of light and darkness. He who looks for it is a chaser of shadows. I, for one, will participate no further in this discussion. Farewell. Abdus, my young friend. Artaban, I must agree with Tigranes. Alas, in my house there sleeps a new bride, and I cannot leave her nor take her with me on this strange journey. This quest is not for me. But may thy sleeps be prospered wherever thou goest. So farewell, my friend. Rodaspes, will you join me? Ursula, I am more understanding of your journey than Tigranes, and I am not newly wed like Abdus. Regardless, I am ill and unfit for hardship. I wish you Godspeed, my friend. Father, I... I do not understand. Oh, my son... It may be that the light of truth is in the sign that has appeared in the skies, and and then it will surely lead to the prince and the mighty brightness, or or, uh, it may be that it's only a shadow of the light, as Tigranes has said, and then he who follows it will have only a long pilgrimage, but an empty search. Father, I, I... Take heart, my son. It is better to follow even the shadow of the best than to remain... Content with the worst. And those who would see wonderful things must often be ready to travel alone. I am too old for this journey. But my heart shall be a companion of the pilgrimage day and night, and I shall know the end of thy quest. Go in peace. I know the star will shine. It must. Jupiter and Saturn are so close. Give me a sign. Show me my faith is not wasted. I knew it. Gentlemen, I knew it. There it is. (laughs) It is the sign. The king is coming and I will go to meet him. Artaban. Abdus, what brings you back here? Have you changed your mind? No, Artaban. I have been thinking of you selling your possessions and have brought you some food, water, parchment, quills, and ink. I wish you success on your journey, and I pray that you are right. Tigranes and Rhodespes will not say it aloud, but I think they do as well. Ah, thank you, my young friend. Your words have renewed my spirit. Vosda, my trusty mare, and I have a long trek ahead of us. <sighs> now, go and see to your bride. Upon my return, I shall recount my journey to you all. <laughs> Until then, farewell. Oh, that's so sad, Papa. Why did his friends not believe him? I don't know that they didn't believe him, Mary. In so much as his faith was just that much stronger than the rest. But they let him make this journey alone. But, dear Elizabeth, he wasn't alone. He had Vazda, 
the fastest and most noble of his horses to keep him company. I want a horse! Can we get a horse, <laughs> Papa? Be still, Jack. What happened next, Father? Well, by the early morning sun, Artaban and Vazda set out on their quest. They traveled westward for ten long days, departing each morning before the sun beamed on the horizon, riding through the day and continuing even further under the light of the moon, finally to sleep under the guardian stars. They ate sparingly, and Artaban shared his food with Vazda, and they even drank from the same wayside springs which flowed cool and plentiful at the base of the mountains. The two, man and beast, were of a single mission. As the night fell on the tenth day, Artaban and Vazda, exhausted and weary from their travels, finally arrived at the shattered walls of populous Babylon. Ah, we have made it, Vazda. Babylon. It is but a short three-hour ride from this place to the Temple of the Seven Spheres. There we will meet my comrades as they wait for us to arrive tonight. Well, I cannot speak your tongue. I agree with your sentiment, dear Vazda. I too pray for rest and refreshment. But we must reach Borsipa by midnight. Sir, will you help us? Help, please. Come, Vazda. What has happened? I, I know not, sir. He, he was walking along the road and, and he collapsed suddenly in the moonlit shadow of this palm tree. Is he your father? No, sir. I have heard tell that he is a poor Hebrew exile who makes his home here. He walks the road at night when it is cool. I, I see him every night and greet him from my home. He acknowledges me with a nod of his head but never says a word. Even still, I feel as though I know him well. His skin is dry as parchment and cool to the touch. Are you a physician? No, my young fellow, but one need not be a physician to know when another is afflicted with fever and near death. Will you help him? Please, sir. I am afraid that nothing can be done for him but to commend his body to the desert where he will be free and at peace. I'm sorry, young man, but I must be on my way for I have three others who await my arrival, and I have but a single hour remaining to join them. Can you do nothing for him? I, I know he still lives. I know he does. I keep this medicine in my tunic for such occasions. If life still flows within him, only a sip should be needed. Sir, he still lives. He has touched upon your robe. God of truth and purity, I pray that you direct me in the holy path, the way of wisdom which only you know. Young man, fetch a ladle of water and bring it here. I will stay with him until your return. But you need to be along on your way. It will take me a few minutes to do as you ask. Then waste no more time here. Go with haste. All right. Who are you, and why have you sought me here to bring me back to life? I am Artaban, the Magian of the city of Ekbatana, and I am going to Jerusalem in search of one who is to be born King of the Jews, a great prince and deliverer for all men. I dare not delay any longer upon my journey, for the caravan that has waited for me may depart without me. <coughs> you have blessed me with a restoration of life. Indeed, sir. But I will serve you once more before I depart. Here is all that I have left of bread and wine, and here is a potion of healing herbs. When your strength is restored, you will be able to find the dwellings of the Hebrews among the houses of Babylon. Now, may the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob bless and prosper the journey of the merciful, 
and bring him in peace to his desired haven. But stay. I have nothing to give you in return. Only this, that I can tell you where the Messiah must be sought. For our prophets have said that he should not be born in Jerusalem, but in Bethlehem of Judah. Bethlehem? Are you certain? Is this known to others or only to you? It has been carried through the land during the time of your voyage. Uh, now, may the Lord bring you in safety to that place, because you have had pity upon the sick. I have fetched the water, sir. Ah, thank you, my son. I must be on my way now, as it is well past midnight. I hasten to think that my friends may have departed without me. With the knowledge you have given me on this night, I know my quest will be successful. God be with you, Artaban. We must make haste, Vazda. Hya! Hello? It is I, Artaban. Hello? Hello? Uh, it appears we are too late, Vasta, for the sun is creeping over the horizon. Stay here, girl. With the light of dawn behind us, I will climb to the top of the terrace and search for our westward caravan. Ah, uh, uh, uh. uh, I see no sign of them, Vasta. Neither near nor far. We have missed them by many hours, I fear. What is this? Vasta. A letter from my friends here on this parchment. <laughs> they knew I would scale this terrace. Artaban, we have waited past the midnight hour and can delay no longer. We go to find the king. Follow us westward across the desert, and we shall meet again, my friend. How can I cross the desert? We have no food, and my poor Vazda is spent. What shall I do? God, grant me wisdom and clarity of purpose. Oh, I have it. I shall return to Babylon, sell my sapphire, which will be acceptable as I have two other gems still to present to the king, and buy a train of camels and provisions for the journey. I may never overtake my friends, but I must continue in my quest. Only God the Merciful knows whether I shall not lose the sight of the king because I tarry to show mercy. We are returning to Babylon, Vazda, as our journey is not yet over. <laughs> And with that, Artaban sold his sapphire, said farewell to Vazda, and set out westward across the desert. He didn't take Vazda? Why not, Papa? You have seen pictures of the desert, haven't you, Mary? Uh-huh. Well, the desert is vast, with days that are very hot and nights that are very cold. The sand is very difficult for horses to walk on, and it would have been dangerous for Vazda to continue the journey with Artaban. Camels have hooves that are better for the sun, right, Papa? And they don't need as much water as horses either. Quite so, Elizabeth. 
and with the three camels he purchased, Artaban could bring provisions as well as have transportation across the desert. But his friends were gone. How did he know where to go? Thanks to the old Hebrew, Artaban knew he must journey to Bethlehem, many days west of Babylon. With no carriages or automobiles as we have here in London, Emily, his travels would have been long and dangerous. But he had faith in his convictions. Papa, did he miss Falster? <laughs> well, Jack, <laughs> I'm sure he did. Just like I missed you all when I had to go away to war. But just as I had faith that my journey would lead me back to you and your mother, Artaban had faith that his journey would ultimately lead him to the king. Did he find him? Did he find the baby Jesus? Not yet, Elizabeth. But Artaban sat high upon the back of his camel as he traversed the vastness of the western desert. By day, the fierce heat was intolerable, and no living creatures moved upon the earth. But during the biting chill of night, the jackals prowled and barked in the distance, while lions roared in the ravines. Through the heat and the cold, the Magian moved steadily onward. He passed the gardens and orchards of Damascus, the Valley of Jordan, the blue waters of the Lake of Galilee, and the highlands of Judah, until he finally arrived in the town of Bethlehem, where, in a low stone cottage on a deserted street, he heard a woman's voice, as if singing to her child. For now, at last, I shall surely find him, though I am alone and later than my brethren. This is the place of which the Hebrew exile told me that the prophets had spoken. Good evening, madam. My name is Artaban the Magian of the city of Ekbatana. What do you want of me? I assure you, madam, I mean you no harm. I have been traveling for many nights, and I am hoping to inquire about the visit of my brethren. They passed through here a few days ago with gifts which were to be presented as tribute to the newborn king. Uh, yes, sir. I remember those of whom you speak. Three strangers from the Far East came to this place three days ago and found Mary and Joseph with their young child, Jesus. They brought gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Yes, yes, those would be my friends. You have seen them? To what house did the star direct them? I know not which house, as none could truly understand their appearance in Bethlehem. They arrived, visited Joseph of Nazareth, and disappeared again as suddenly as they had come. They said the star guided them to their quarry, but did not identify it further. We could not understand it. Can you point me in the direction of this place, where the star guided my brethren? Even if I could, it would do you no good turn. For upon the next morning, it was said that Joseph took the babe and his mother and fled during the night. Where were they headed? It was whispered that they were going far away to Egypt. Egypt? Yes, Egypt. And ever since, there has been a spell upon the village. Something... Evil hangs over it. They say that the Roman soldiers are coming from Jerusalem to force a new tax from us. That the men have driven the flocks and herds far back among the hills and hidden themselves to escape it. And you are left alone with your child? I am. It must be this way, or my husband will surely die at the hands of the soldiers. Uh, 
do you have children, Mr. Ataban? No, madam. I am Amajian. Uh, I thought perhaps the way you are looking at this child is very tender and warm. What is crossing your mind when you look at him? I was to arrive here with my brethren to present my gifts at the feet of the king. My journey has been fraught with challenges, but I have persevered. I have been guided by God, by grace, and by faith to your small stone cottage, the only lighted room in the village. And as I look upon your child, I wonder to myself if this child might not be the promised prince. Kings have been born in lowlier houses than this, and the favorite of the stars rise even from a cottage as humble as this. But you seem to doubt that which you see before you. I do, for no other reason than the fact that it was not seemed good to the God of Wisdom to reward my search so soon and so easily. I fear the one whom I seek has indeed gone before me, and now I must follow the king to Egypt. Then God be with you on your journey, Artaban. But before you go, please, come and have something to eat. You are most kind to this weary stranger, madam. I gratefully accept your kindness. your child and get to the darkest corner of the room. Hide him under your robe and pray that he stays asleep. I will protect you. Now, go. <laughs> you there. In the name of the Emperor, I command you to stand aside. I shall not yield, Captain. This is my home. I have nothing you and your men would want. You will move aside, or I will throw you out into the street and take whatever I may want that you are hiding within. There is no one in this place but me, and I am waiting to give this jewel to the prudent captain who will leave me in peace. For a man who has nothing, where would one such as yourself acquire such a precious stone? It is of no consequence how I acquired this jewel, but know that it is yours if you will leave this place unmolested. I do not know you, sir. Who are you? Who I am is of no import. What you have been presented this night most certainly is. March on, men. There is no child here. <laughs> they have departed, madam. What did you say to make them leave? What was required, nothing more. Now, I must take my leave of you. Oh, Artaban, wait! You arrive tonight as a stranger, but you leave as a friend. I will pray for your journey. And because you have saved the life of my little one, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You are most kind. You and your child are safe. Peace be with you. God of truth, forgive my sin. 
I have said the thing that is not to save the life of a child, and two of my gifts are gone. I have spent for a man that which was meant for God. Shall I ever be worthy to see the face of the king? Why did he have to leave? He hadn't yet found the baby Jesus. His journey wasn't over yet, Mary. You're absolutely right, Emily. But what you don't realize yet is that while he was only three days behind his friends upon reaching Bethlehem, his quest had just taken a drastic turn for the worse. Did he quit, Papa? Did he go back and get Valsa? No, children. Artaban didn't quit. And Jack, as much as I'm sure he would have loved to, he did not return to Babylon to get Vazda. Did he go to Egypt, Father? He certainly did, Emily. It was a long and arduous journey to Egypt, and Artaban searched everywhere for traces of the king. He moved through Heliopolis, beneath the walls of the Roman fortress of New Babylon, stood at the foot of the Great Pyramids, and marveled under the shadow of the crouching Sphinx. His quest eventually took him to Alexandria, where he sought counsel with a venerable Hebrew rabbi. May I help you, my son? I am sorry to disturb you, Rabbi, but my name is Artaban, the Magian of the city of Ekbatana, and I am in search of the promised Messiah. My journey has taken me across the desert to Bethlehem and now to Egypt, and I have heard you may be able to help me. Come in, my son. Come in. Please, sit. Thank you, Rabbi. Can you help me find the one I seek? I have searched for so long, and am starting to doubt that I shall ever find him. To doubt is human, but to live in the strength of your faith is divine. Your journey has been fraught with obstacles that would have stopped any other man, but you have persevered. It is true, and I have been tested. It is foretold in the prophecies of Israel that the king whom you are seeking is not to be found in a palace, nor among the rich and powerful. This I know and have rediscovered often. The kingdom which is to be established forever is a new kingdom, the royalty of perfect and unconquerable love. I do not know how this shall come to pass nor how the turbulent kings and peoples of Earth shall be brought to acknowledge the Messiah and pay homage to him. But this I know. Those who seek him will do well to look among the poor and the lowly, the sorrowful and the oppressed. Thank you, Rabbi. I understand your words and will do as you advise. I will keep faith that I will find the king, where I shall present my gift at his feet. Go forth, Magian. May God's blessings guide you in your moments of sorrow. May his light shine upon you in your moments of need. And may you keep faith in the righteousness of your quest. For three and thirty years, Artaban traveled from place to place, searching among the people of the dispersion, with whom the little family from Bethlehem might, perhaps, have found a refuge. He passed through countries where famine lay heavy upon the land, made his dwelling in plague-stricken cities, visited the oppressed and the afflicted in subterranean prisons, and witnessed the crowded wretchedness of slave markets and the weary toil of galley ships. In all this populous and intricate world of anguish, though he found none to worship, he found many to help. He fed the hungry, and clothed the naked, and healed the sick, and comforted the captive. And his years went by with such fervent ministry that it seemed almost as if he had forgotten his quest. But then, as he stood alone at sunrise, waiting at the gate of a Roman prison, he took from a secret resting place in his bosom the pearl 
the last of his jewels. It was duller than he remembered, and seemed to have absorbed some reflection of the colors of the lost sapphire and ruby. And while he stood there, worn and weary, and ready to die, but still searching for the king, he decided to return to Jerusalem, which at this time was in a frenzy. You there, young man, what are you called? What? Me, sir? I am called Elijah. My young friend Elijah, then. Tell me, the city is in quite a tumult. What is this singular agitation, and where do these townspeople venture? We are going to Golgotha, outside the city walls, where there is to be an execution. This frenzy is for an execution? It is, sir. Have you not heard what has happened? No, my young friend. I have only just now arrived. Two famous robbers are to be crucified, and with them another, called Jesus of Nazareth. Why the third man? You did not identify him with the previous, so I assume he was not in league with the robbers. No, sir. He is a man who has done many wonderful works among the people, and we love him greatly. But the priests and elders have said that he must die, because he gave himself out to be the Son of God. Could it be? And Pilate has sent him to the cross because he said that he was the King of the Jews. The king of the Jews? Are you certain? Quite certain, sir. I'm sorry. But I must go. Fare you well. Could this be he who was born in Bethlehem 33 years ago, at whose birth the star had appeared in the heaven, and of whose coming the prophets had spoken? Is it possible that the king whom I seek and have sought for a lifetime over land and sea has arisen, has been denied and cast out? Come, sir, the execution's about to commence. You don't want to miss this. Follow me to the Damascus Gate. I miss this? Why should I desire to partake in such a grotesque display? But should I not go? For the ways of God are stranger than the thoughts of men. And it may be that I shall find the king at last. And, and, yes, yes, after all these years, I still have my pearl. The last gift for the king. And if he is in the hand of his enemies, I shall offer my pearl for his ransom before he dies. Let me go! Machin! I beg you, don't be. Linda, stop that girl! Pity on me, please, sir, and save me for the sake of the God of purity. How do you know that I am of the Magi? Your cloak and the winged circle on your tunic. Sir, I am a daughter of the true religion, which is taught by the Magi. My father was a merchant of Parthia, but he is dead. And how should I save you, child? There she is. I am to be seized for his debts. And sold as a slave. Please, sir. Please save me from a life worse than death. We will take up from here, Megan. Hold your ground, gentlemen. You see, this girl will not be seized. <laughs> and you have once again brought forth the conflict in my soul. It was first born in the palm grove of Babylon and then in the cottage at Bethlehem. It is the conflict between the expectation of faith and the impulse of love. She is to be sold into slavery. She cannot pay her father's debts. She's fortunate not to face execution with those other three right now. Well, gentlemen, this situation, this day, has presented me with yet a third trial, the ultimate probation. I have already drawn from my hand a sapphire and a ruby 
in the service of humanity. And you now leave me with the final and irrevocable choice. Quit your banter, old man, and give us the girl that we kill you first and take her after. Gentlemen, I assure you that will not be necessary, nor will apprehending this girl be required. You see, I have saved a precious gift that I was to present to the king. But I believe this is an inevitable result of God's love. Take this pearl, my child, with love, as love is the light of the soul. This is thy ransom. It is the last of my treasures, and now it is yours. You are free. Here! Take this pearl and know that my family's debts are paid. Let me alone. You have bought yourself a slave. Let us go before the sky opens upon us. Magian, we must seek shelter. Come, by the wall of the Praetorium. I am coming. Yes. <laughs> Please, child. My name is Artaban. From the wall are crashing around us. We must find other shelter. Go, save yourself. What does it matter for me? I am old. What have I to live for? I have given away my last tribute for the king. But I am at peace with your freedom. You have saved me. I won't leave your side. Please, let us go. I am at peace, child. All is well, and I have done the best that I could from day to day. Even if I could live my earthly life over again, it could not be otherwise than it had been. Artaban! Artaban! Oh, please, Lord. Do not take this kind and loving soul. He sacrificed his life's quest for me. A truer act of love I cannot fathom. Artaban, <laughs> thou hast completed thy quest. Is someone there? Please help. My friend has been struck in the head and I cannot move him alone. Please. <laughs> not so, my lord. Uh Artaban! Thank God you're alive! For when saw I thee unhungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw I thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? When saw I thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? Three and thirty years I have looked for thee, and I have never seen thy face, nor ministered to thee, my king. Artaban, I cannot understand the words you speak. Please stay with me. Verily, I say unto thee, inasmuch as thou hast done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, Thou hast done it unto me. Well, it is finished. The execution. Can you believe he thought he was the son of God? Yes. Yes, child. I... I... No. Artaban. Artaban. I shall always remember your kindness. Though the years have not been kind, and your travels have aged you twice or thrice, I shall preserve the look on your face in my mind. Like the first ray of dawn 
on a snowy mountain peak. <laughs> Good night, my friend. <laughs> And in that long breath, Artaban, the Magian from the city of Akbatana, had ended his quest. His treasures were accepted. The fourth wise man had found the king. The end. I think they've all fallen asleep with your voice in their dreams. Oh, you always were the best bedtime storyteller, my love. My darling. How long have you been sitting there? Oh, since you told of Artaban's interaction with the rabbi. I don't know if I've ever heard that story before. Well, then, we shall have to read it again, my dear. Perhaps next Christmas, when I am once again home with you and the children. Only make promises you know you can keep, husband. Of course, my dear. But... I have served in the army since I was Emily's age. Can you believe that? Thirty-three years next month. And as I read the story tonight, I came to realize that I have also been on a quest. And like Artaban, I may have lost sight of that quest along the way. But here, tonight, with you and with our family, my mission is clear. What are you saying? I'm saying, my dear wife, that I will return to my regiment after this Christmas furlough and let the general know that I am retiring. Retiring? Do you mean it? I do indeed. As Artaban said, all is well, and I have done the best that I could from day to day. Even if I could live my earthly life over again, it could not be otherwise than it had been. And I want to live every day forward with you. Let's to bed now and leave these precious ones with sugar plums dancing in their heads. Capital idea, my dear. Good night, my children. And may this be the merriest of Christmases for us all. You have been listening to Artaban and the Quest for the King by Markiewicz Audio Works. Copyright 2023 by Jason Markiewicz. Based upon Henry Van Dyke's 1895 short novel, The Story of the Other Wise Man. Appearing in this production in alphabetical order were Justin Ali as the Rabbi, Bethany Baldwin as the Bethlehem Woman, Martin Beadle as Rhoda Spies, Nate Beagle as Abdus and Elijah, Caleb Bressler as the young man in Babylon and the Jerusalem townsman, Jonathan Cook as the Hebrew exile, Trina Duhart as Elizabeth, Charlie Everly as Mary, Richard Gibson as the Roman captain and the Macedonian guard, Sharon Grunwald as Mrs. Blackwood, Alicia Hansen as the Jerusalem slave girl, Glenn Haskell as Abgaris and the voice from above, Brian Jeffords as Artaban, Jason Lasky as Tigranes, Rainy Mangan as Jack, Jason Markiewicz as Colonel Blackwood, and Rachel Pulliam as Emily. Our majestic cover art was designed by John Markiewicz. Music heard in this production was composed by Alexander Nakarada and Raphael Crux. The scriptwriter, sound designer, and director was yours truly. If you enjoyed listening to Artaban and the Quest for the King, you are sure to enjoy our other award-nominated productions available on YouTube, Audible, iTunes, Spotify, and wherever you get your audio dramas. Please visit us on Facebook at Marky Woods Audio Works, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Marky Woods Audio Works Presents, or visit our website at www.markywoodsaudioworks.com. 
We would love to hear from you and invite you to send us your feedback or comments through our website or by emailing Markiewicz Audio Works at gmail.com. This is Jason Markiewicz, and on behalf of the entire cast and crew of Artaban and the Quest for the King, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a safe holiday season wherever your listening adventures may take you. And that's this week's show. Please check for show notes for Artaban and the Quest for the King at sonicsociety.org. Send us an email at sonicsociety at gmail.com or contact us through the Facebook groups or Twitter. May this season bring you joy no matter what your beliefs and family, wherever it is, related or chosen to warm your heart. Merry Christmas, David. Yes, happy Christmas, Jack. (laughs) Until we see you all next week for New Year's Eve, I'm Jack Ward. New Year's Eve, gosh, yes. And I'm David Alt. See you then.